what's the, what, what is like some of the key factors that contribute to the person's credit score? You know, oddly enough, if I were to take a pie chart and cut it into pieces, the largest section of that pie chart that has to do with your credit score, believe it or not. It's gonna be Steve Tansy, the professor credit. And today we're gonna be talking about credit scores, why they're important and how that can affect your mortgage. So uh, Steve, so thanks so much for joining me. You're very welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, yeah, it's my pleasure is all mine for sure. So we know how important credit is in this world that we live in today. Like how can it affect your cars and your houses and just credit card debt? Like, so we know how important it impacts every, every portion of our life. It touches everything, right? And it's one thing that you can discriminate against, right? You can have, if you have bad credit, well, they, they will discriminate against, against you, right? So what exactly is a credit score and how does it like, what, how is it calculated? Well, first of all, there's, believe it or not, there's two types of scores that people are unaware of. There's FICO and there's what's called Vantage. Everybody knows FICO. It stands for the Fair Isaac Company. Not too many people are familiar with Vantage. If you check your credit karma, that's typically what it is. Vantage is owned by Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. So the lending industry out there has to choose one of the two to use. They've chose to go with FICO simply because the Fire Isaac company buys the credit reports directly from the bureaus, whereas the Vantage scoring system is owned by Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. And if they chose to, which they would not do, they can make any changes on your credit report that they want. So bankers being naturally untrusting since, I guess, Bonnie and Clyde, <laughs> they chose to go with a company that has that does not have the ability to make a change on credit bureaus. So you're going to find out that 99% of all lending institutions use FICA scoring systems. Okay. It doesn't matter if you're monitoring your credit, which one you watch. It really doesn't. Because if your Vantage score goes up, so did your FICA score. If your Vantage score goes down, so did your FICA score. And you'll find out monitoring your credit on Vantage is less expensive. It doesn't matter which one you watch. And the reason that is, is because inside FICO and inside Vantage, there's literally different scoring models. What does that mean? That means that, believe it or not, last time I checked, there was 40 different scores inside FICO. Mm. 40. That means if you go up to buy a car and you get three FICO scores, Go kitty corner there to buy an electronic flat screen TV. You're going to get three different FICA scores. Go to buy a timeshare, three more different FICA scores. Go to buy a boat, three more different FICA scores. This is why it's unimportant which one you watch. As long as you watch it, you should. And if you're watching FICO, most likely what you're going to be seeing everywhere is a FICA H scoring model. But it is really, really important. Uh, most people don't realize that even your automobile insurance is based off of your credit score before your driving record. Mm. Not to count the insurance on the home that you want to buy by raising your credit score. So when you do buy your house, bundle your insurance and you'll find out exactly how much you were overpaying with your low credit score. So watching your credit and knowing about credit is imperative in today's society. Not to count identity theft is the second largest crime in the United States next to narcotics. Scotty, you, I, and all your public out there know that there's drugs on every street in every city in every county in every state. That means there's identity theft on every city and every street in every county in every state. And it'd be a real shame to build your score up, go down to buy your first car at 0% finance, only to find out you didn't pay for that $70,000 boat in San Diego where you've never been. Identity theft, really, really important to monitor your credit, really, really important to make credit part of your lifestyle. And that's where the change comes in. If you want a healthier body, you change your eating habits. Same thing with credit, change your, what the way you've been doing it. If it's not working, it needs to be changed. Call a professor, I'll show you how. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's good. So th there's, you know, there's the two different types of scores uh, monitor monitoring and either of them both kind of give you the same, like if you're watching one, you, the other one's going to be affected as well. So no matter which one they're pulling, you're still going to have the same effect, uh, or overall effect to that. Um, so like, what's the, what, what is like some of the key factors that contribute to the person's credit score? You no, know, oddly enough, if I were to take a pie chart 
and cut it into pieces, the largest section of that pie chart that has to do with your credit score, believe it or not, is payment history. Hmm. You and I and normal common sense would say it's the least destructive simply because I was just late. It's not like I didn't pay. It's yeah. not like it's a collection, a charge off. But believe it or not, that is 35% of your score's payment history. So if you're running behind and you have to spend $19 to overnight that money to your credit card company before you get a 30-day late, do it. It's a lot cheaper than watching your score plummet. And the higher your score goes, the more a late payment will affect you. If your score is in the 700s, 750, guess what? One single late payment of I watched it drop a client's credit score 120 points. Wow. Well, if you're in the 500s and you get a late payment, you may only lose 20, 25 points because you don't have that much more to lose. Yeah. Yes, it is extremely important. And it's important to do, to build your credit and to monitor it and to look at your inquiries. So yes, credit is important in every aspect of our life. I try to teach people, stop looking at it as, as it is something you cannot see, smell, touch, or feel. To the guys, I go, look at it as your dream car. What is your dream car? Lamborghini, Ferrari, Bugatti. That's how you should treat your credit. You should want to check on it. You should want to show your friends and family members, open up your phone and say, hey, check out my credit score. Yeah. You do the so, same thing if you had a Ferrari. Yeah. It's one of those things like if you, the things we focus on, like expand, right? So if we're not watching it, it's going to probably degrade and, and not do well. So like if we are one of those things we're paying attention to and we're actually like watching it, we're it's probably going to get better, right? So because we're, we're actively keeping in mind, like what is affecting it. And it's important to note, like you said, like one, the, one of those being late payments is going to affect your score probably the most out of anything in the, on, on your credit score. So that's, that's really good information there. Um, now, like for someone that, like you said, monitoring, so what's one of the best ways to, to monitor your credit then? There's numerous credit monitoring services out there that not only will monitor your credit, They'll even throw in a $1 million liability policy. What in the world is that, Steve? That's where, suppose you did a scratch off tonight and won a million dollars, put it in your bank. And next week, you went to pull some money out and it's gone. What would you do? You go to the manager of the bank, tell him my million dollars is missing. He'd say, here's your temporary debit card. Here's your temporary checks. Then you ask them, is there a temporary million dollars in there? No. <laughs> We're going to do a three-month investigation and make sure there's no fraud on your behalf before we decide to put the money back into your account. So you're without money for three months. It's important to monitor your credit. And when I'm talking about monitoring, that's once a month. You guys pay your bills online once a month. Before you turn your laptop or your PC off, open a tab, check your credit. Look at the oh. inquiries. Look at the, see who pulled your credit. In That's order a, to buy that $70,000 boat, they had to apply for credit. Look yes. at your inquiries first, look at your score second and see if it went up or it went down. If it went up, you want to multiply that. How do you do that? You're allowed to print off last month's plus this month's. Go through them page by page, item per item, line per line. Whatever you see that's changed, made your score go up. You want to multiply that. If your score went down, do the same thing. Print out the credit report from last month, from this month. Look at it item per item. Whatever changed, that dropped your score. You want to undo that and never do it again. Mm. So yeah, actually look at your credit report, see what changes are actually occurring on there. And then realize, then you kind of get an idea and a feel of like what is affecting your score. Right? That's, that's and really then good. For a couple months, it becomes just natural habit to take a look at and go, oh, great. My score went up on these two bureaus, but not on the third one. Hmm. Wonder why. You talked about the importance of on-time payments and watching it. Is there any other like maybe tips or strategies that you know, uh, other than paying on time that actually does improve your credit score? Adding new lines of credit, you guys. It's important. The, the key is to be able to add credit, but not add debt. How do you do that? Everybody thinks they're tied together. They're not. You can have credit and not have debt. My secret sauce, you guys, is credit cards. I'm not bragging when I'm telling you this. My score in the past 15 years has never dropped below 836. 
I'm a high school graduate that got a D in math for one year and never took it again. Mm -hmm. So it's not mathematics. It's a matter of knowing how the computers at the credit bureaus have been programmed. Once you learn that, you can manipulate these computers. So adding positive lines of credit, especially credit cards. If I have a credit card, doesn't mean I have debt. Mm. And here's the thing. There's two types of credit. There's installment, there's revolving. Okay. Installment is like a house or a car. You go into debt and you pay interest. Let's say, Scotty, you bought a $200 million house next to J-Lo in Hawaii. You pay it off in 20 years instead of 30. The day you pay it off, did your score go up or down? Uh, I think it would go up. It goes down. Hmm. Why? Because a one-day-old baby that cannot even turn over in its crib or feed itself can manage a $1 billion closed account. There's nothing to do. You can't make it better. You can't make it worse. What some people are unaware of, they're still like three points behind that closed account that'll stay on there for seven years until that statute limitation makes that closed account fall off. So it's important. And I love credit cards because guess what? They never die. Mm -hmm. As long as you utilize them, at minimum of once a year. <laughs> and again, I'm not bragging. I thought I was maxed out at eight credit cards that I couldn't handle anymore. I now have 15. That's my secret sauce, you guys. <laughs> 15? That sounds 15. crazy, right? And here's, and here's, I'm going to give you an example of how important and over time, make it part of your lifestyle. My very first credit card, when I applied, I applied to Capital One and they declined me. When I asked why, they said, because you have no credit. I went, duh. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do here is get credit. And they, yeah. I said, what can I do? And they said, well, you can have your mom and dad co-sign for a car. And I went, well, no dad. Uh, mom raised four kids and she was a high school dropout. So you can only imagine what her credit was like. Not to count, my car is better than hers. So I mm -hmm. said, no, can't ask mom to help me with credit. What else can I do? They said, you can get a secured credit card. What's that? Send us $200, we'll send you a $200 credit card. Use it properly and modestly and pay it on time. And what ended up happening is Capital One sent me a card. And 10 months later, they sent me a cashier's check for $200 and said, your card's now worth $500. So back then, when I was really young, to me, that was a lot of money. Yeah. Now I have $700. So I decided to wait a couple months and apply for a Citibank card because I wanted SkyMiles. Don't like to pay for airfare. Got my SkyMile card for $700. Now let's fast forward to today. I still have that card. Only mm. that card is 38 years old and now $48,000. Mm. And you want to know what it does, Scotty? And folks out there, it pays my, my satellite dish. And that's all it does. It mm. sets in my fire safe. And every month, since I know exactly what the bill is going to be, I have my bank pay the credit card each month. I have a separate credit card that pays my cell phone, a $20,000 credit card. You guys can do this <laughs> with a $500 credit card, just making sure that you never go over 30% of the limit on the card because your score will drop a little bit by overutilizing the card. And I see this a lot of times where people go over the 30%. They're not checking their credit. They don't realize it dropped. It drops again at 50%. And the computers at the credit bureau at 80% at consider your card maxed out. And if you mm -hmm. go one penny over the limit, now your score is going to drop like you, like you may miss three payments. Good news is when you pay it down, you get your score back. That, those are, that's really good information right there. Like utilization, the 30% rule, 50%, 80%. Those are good rules. That, that's a great takeaway right there. And there's really nothing you can do if you've all, there's a box on every credit report, Scotty. You've seen it yourself. It says high balance. Mm -hmm. That tells the underwriters out there, what's the most you've ever used on that card? You want that little box to be at 30%, no more meaning use it up to 30% and no more, or use more than 30% and pay it down before they report to the credit bureau. So that little box shows 30%. That also gives you the ability to call the credit card company once a year and ask for an increase. Why? If Mr. Credit Card Man, if you look at your stats, you'll see that I've never gone over 30%. Why? Because I know it drops my score. If you want me to use more of your card, I need an increase. Yeah, yeah. 
And I, every year, whether I need it or not, Scott, I get on the phone January 1st and ask for an increase on every single card. Do not wait for your credit card companies to offer one. Make sure your score's up, make sure your balances are down, and then call the credit card company and ask for increases and ask them, how often can I ask? Mm. Some will say six months, some will say one year. If it says but six months, I take a pair of scissors and snip off the corner. That tells me in June, I need to do it again. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. That's good. That's good tip asking, literally asking them say, Hey, can I get more, more usage or can I get more credit on my line? So I don't use up as much. So the ratio stay better. And then as long as you're paying it back and, and you know, that they'll likely, if you part charge and up no, and pay back, they'll go, Oh yeah, sure. Right. And no banker said that you can only make one payment. You can max out your card. Just call your credit card company and ask them, when do you guys report to the credit bureaus? They may say on the 18th, that's when we send your statement out. That means on the 17th, you need to have it paid down below 30%. Hmm. So paying it before the due date, right? Before they're going to report the usage, right? That's If you're good going tip. over the 30% mark. Gotcha. And especially if you guys know you're going to be applying for credit or asking for more credit cards or going for a home loan or using Scotty, make sure that before he pulls your credit reports and does his work that all of your revolving lines of credit are under 30 percent that way your score is as high as possible yeah and that's good let's tr let's transition to that that talking about the mortgage there so the impact on of your credit on being able to get a mortgage now um we we typically see like if you're not above a 620 like you're most people can't even get you qualified for a mortgage no matter how much money you're making really because and that's what's crazy about like having like even though you'd be borrowing money and you want to have money for the down payment and you might have money for closing costs. If you don't have good credit, you're not, you're going to have a hard time getting somebody to, to lo loan you money for 30 years for this house note. Right. Yeah. I have a business partner in Phoenix that does what's called FICO funding. If you've never heard of it, if it's your business owner, this guy can get, he can get a hundred thousand dollars overnight at 0% interest. But guess what the key factor is? I said FICO funding. <laughs> that means you have to have a decent FICO score. You have to be in the 700s. And that's when the doors open up to your scores. You guys start at 300, max out at 850. When I ask clients out there, what do you think the perfect credit score is? Most of them will jump at the 850. I go, no, 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 no. That's not it. Here's how it actually works in the real world. 80% of all lenders out there consider 700 perfect. But notice I said 80%. 10% have moved it to 720, the remaining 10% moved it to 740. So once you get to 740, 750, you and I can go to the same place to buy the same thing, but my 850 score and your 740 will get the same exact interest rate. Mm -hmm. Mine's overkill. Mine's just good for bragging. But notice what I do. Well, <laughs> yeah. About it's, it because I'm very, very proud. It shows that you actually know what you're doing too. And you can say, hey, well, my credit score is in the 800s, right? Even though I'm, I don't need it to be, right? When you get above that 740, like you, you do get the best, you know, rates, which is you talked about, which is good to know, like, hey, you know, how the mortgage works is like, you know, there's underlying how much you're, how much you're borrowing and your debt loan to value ratios and your debt to income ratios, but also your credit score. So all those factor in to matter what kind of rate you're going to get interest rate you're going to be borrowing at, right? And the lower your credit yeah. score, the higher interest rate, which means more interest you're going to pay over the life of that loan. And we're talking about a loan that's 30 years, right? So that's going to be a lot of money just by, you know, those 40 or $50 different a month payment is going to add up over the life of the loan. It's going to, you're going to pay a lot more, right? A whole lot more. And get your credit into that seven point seven hundred forty range, right and above, before you go and applying for that mortgage is really important factor. No, uh, not necessarily seven forty before you apply for the mortgage. That's ideal for you. Yeah. But as we all know, you can get them done at six twenty. Yeah. Well, we can go lower, but like I say, to for the get the best rates, right? So, like, obviously, yeah. we don't. And some people don't know what their credit score is, right? And sometimes we reveal that to them when they do apply. They think, oh, I'm in the seven hundreds, and then we tell them, okay. And the way we look at it right now, currently, there's three monitor, th three reports we get back, right? And we got to take the middle score. So if they have like a seven twenty, a seven ten, and a seven hundred, well, we're taking the seven ten is that middle score. Um, as far as for the mortgage stuff, but uh, isn't it, we're going to be changing that model maybe in the future, maybe to four, the fourth credit score? No, I don't believe so. Well, there actually is one out there already called Innovus. 
when people come to me, I go after Experian, Equifax, TransUnion, and Innovus, but nobody really uses the Innovus. Innovus. I just clean it because if an underwriter decides to pull it and sees three credit, clean credit reports and one dirty one, he knows what happened. Mm. He knows we scrubbed it for him. Oh, okay. So okay. I make sure to go after all four credit bureaus out there. Yeah, because the fourth one, guys, I don't even, we don't ever pull from currently, right? But no. Maybe, yeah. No one really does. But I, I go after it because we're a different breed of credit restoration or credit repair company out there. The industry has a very bad reputation and my company has an excellent, superb reputation because we have a law firm in our office. This is what makes us different. People mm. that want to fix their credit, hire credit repair companies, or will do disputes themselves. People that feel they've been wronged, hire an attorney. Having an attorney writing letters to your creditors makes a huge difference. And remember this, you guys, when it comes to buying a house, you buy the house, but you date the rate. Mm -hmm. Houses are constantly going up. We don't know what's going to happen with rate. Do you, Scotty? No, if I did, I'd be a billionaire. So There you go. So buy the house before it goes up any higher, because that's one thing that's going to happen nonstop. Houses just keep going up. It's a, the one of the best investments you could ever make on the planet is buying a house. Not to count it's the American dream and on everybody's bucket mm -hmm. list. Get the house. You can always refinance. Rates drop down. Go back yeah. to Scotty, see him again. Say, hey, look it. I noticed I, I used to have a policy that if I can save a point, I'll refi. Yeah, no, that's good. Uh, we we did build a, recently, I built a, a buy versus wait kind of calculator to see like, oh, I'll wait for the rates to drop, right? And it shows you what happens when you do that. You end up usually losing money. So I'll link to the other video too right now and you'll down, down below, you can check that out, um, which we don't ever recommend rate waiting because like say prices are going to go up and you can always refinance. So like good, good point there. Um, is there, I want to ask this one more question and then we'll kind of wrap this up. Uh, sure. Is, you know, before they do apply, what would be your recommendations that they do do before applying for the mortgage, say with me, so that they're going to be shopping for that home? One, make sure, again, your credit cards are all paid down below 30%. And two, a lot of people don't know this. This is part of my education I teach people. And, and I found out some loan officers don't even know it, but you, you have to have at least one revolving, I mean, one installment account the the industry doesn't like installment accounts because it puts debt but you can get an installment account there are plenty of savings accounts out there i use a, a bank that will take 25 dollars a month put it lock it up into a cd but report it as an installment loan mm -hmm. the computers have been programmed consider that a well-rounded credit portfolio as many credit cards as you want and at least one installment account will give you 10% more extra points on top of everything just for having those two in good shape. Wow. So that kind of goes against the the idea of like, you know, I used to lift, listen to Dave Ramsey for years and like this idea, like, well, pay off all your other debts, right? Just have the house stuff, right? You know, and so like this idea of having at least one revolving account being a beneficial to your credit scores that helps you get the best rates, right? So it's like, uh, uh, that's that's good information there. Yeah, and, and Dave Ramsey, he was good at his time, and he's still yeah. out there, but he he taught no credit. Yeah. No, that's wrong. Credit Especially in good. today's world. I think that's just, you credit know. Credit is good. I mean, there's even women, there's, there's sites now that you check people's credit before you date them. I, well, and that's one of the key, you know, we deal with, you know, we deal with a lot of divorce. And it's one of the things we tell people when they are starting to get back into that is like, hey, making sure that the person you're talking to has a, you know, credit that means they've been paying, taking care of their stuff, right? It just is one more factor of someone that's showing being a responsible adult, right? So it's just one of those other things. Not the you know end all be all, obviously, but it's one of those things that it's it's a good thing to know, right? So, um, well, I appreciate it so much, Steve. We'll we'll have you back for another video in which we'll be talking on about like how the home buying and credit more a little more. But uh, I appreciate it so much that all your information you shared with us today. Um, I'll link below how how um, they can best get in contact. I'll put it down there for you for everyone to be able to get in contact with you as well too. So, uh, well, thanks so much, and uh, we'll encourage everyone to you know keep monitoring your credit because it is important important factor that in today's world and it's just going to affect so many different things so uh, if you have any more questions you can reach out to steve or myself about those things about the credit reach out to him if you're interested in mortgage you can reach out to us here at the gifford group 